here's the thing. All you have to do to score this test is you see how there's a horizontal line, there's a letter here, over here on the right. All you have to do is go through and in those two sections above that horizontal line, those are all the P. So if you made one mark, you put a one here. If you have all eight of them, you put an eight in the P. So just count them up. Same thing with A, B, C, et cetera. So just look in the horizontal sections and however many words you did in each of those sections, just put it into that line right next to it. So it's pretty simple to score. And just to reiterate, <laughs> Um, the horizontal boxes are actually the scoring system. So you count how many words you've actually checked. For instance, in P, and you simply put that number over here. Now, I'd like you to turn your attention to the Leary chart. You will notice that, yeah, it's tilted a little bit, but we have the same quadrants, okay? We have the quadrant from A to N is our sanguine, from B to E is our choleric, F to I is the melancholic, and the phlegmatic is J to M. So what you do is, and you can see that he has sort of keywords for each one of these things, and yes, you can go more into depth and you can math mathematically figure out the center of these in, in this circular chart and everything, but he has things like, okay, if you had a score of two, you would be at the line that's right above able to give orders for A. If you had a score of six for J, you would be admires and imitates others, often helped by others, very respectful of, to authority. So you would be in that next line there. So each line represents two points. So you can either color that in or put a large dot. And if you want, you can connect the dots. And maybe some of you will have, you know, something like this. So that's sort of your profile here for the water. So you don't do a lot here. But maybe you're here, 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 and here. And so you've got a lot of mojo up here in the same width. It's not unusual to have some that are zeros, okay? Um, the eights are a little unusual. Um, I actually had a friend of mine who wound up with an eight for the B, egotistical and conceited. Um, he was a little shocked. And keep in mind, yes, this is somewhat 1950s psychology, a bit pejorative at times. But basically, it lets you see how well balanced are you. Now, keeping in mind Leary's whole idea of reflexiveness, you can also go through this test and go, oh, was my mother like this? And you can do the test for your mother, your father, your spouse. What does it show? It shows your feelings and interpersonal interactions with them, how you view them, not how they are themselves. But oftentimes, you'll start to see how your stuff in connects with theirs if you've done the test and you see how your viewpoint is. Say you're somebody who's really submissive and you wound up with an authoritarian partner, okay? that might show up in your viewpoint. Maybe they don't even think of themselves as authoritarian, but you've projected that onto them. So there's all sorts of rich stuff that can come from this. So you can start to see in each of these quadrants how much juju do you have in them. Make sense? Okay. So it's a little bit of self-reflecting. You can use, like I said, the test for other people and what are your impressions of them. 
Leary would use it, they'd give the test to somebody before and after psychotherapy and see how much more balanced are they? Did their, did their center of gravity shift somewhat? And he has whole mathematical formulas for doing that in his book, which is now back in print. For a while, the cheapest version of it was about 350 bucks. Um, I really wish I had gotten it to it when he was alive and I could have gotten a signed edition of that one. Um, but such is fate. So, um, about me and uh, how to get a hold of this, my email is real easy. I bought my name. <sighs> so I am alan at alansalmi.com. Okay? So if you email me and say, hey, send me the Leary test, I'll, I can send you a, either a PDF or a doc format. Um, this is available in various places on the net. You know, you can grab it from there too. Uh, the Leary Grid is available, especially as a picture on, on the map, and you can find out more there. Um, what I do is I do consultations in astrology. Um, I also do psychotherapy. One of my specialties is working with, gee, surprise, surprise, minority religions. Okay. So I have a lot of problems. Yeah, I have everything from female Catholic priests who've come to see me to um, your standard Wiccans and Santeria and, and whatnot. So good number of the occultists in Chicago know about me. But I can also, of course, work with people over Skype. And I have a number of different tools to, to assist people. Uh, you can look me up at alansalmi.com. And uh, there's also my astro-therapy.net. But you, know, you can look up astrotherapy on my, uh, on my YouTube, too see about some of that. So that's my little commercial. Any final questions? Yes. Um, I think generally as understood in America, at least today, the sanguine would be considered the positive, you know, the like the ideal. Maybe I'm placing my own value on it, but no, right. no, no, no. It's like everybody loves Sagittarians <laughs> if you're talking about Zodiac, you know. Yeah. So, I mean, in a, in a balanced sense, mm -hmm. um, would somebody who is in that quadrant want to have, want to be less in that quadrant and kind of bring everything closer to the I don't know about center? less, but, but more, or more able good. to do the other ones. Okay. If the person's dominant all the time and friendly, okay, um, are they really going to be able to take directions from someone else? Sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. What are they going to be like in an intimate relationship if they're frozen in that? You know, that's why I say that the middle or the balance is really one of the better things to realize that there are choices and you don't have to be locked into a particular behavior. Each of them has their downfall too, though. You know, um, certainly the friendly leader can feel locked and trapped into their oh I can't get out of this the forces of fate or whatever that they've set up and. You know, you are then also the projection for a lot of people's stuff when you're a leader. You know, so there's all the interpersonal dynamics. You know, I remember Isaac Bonowitz used to sell at pagan gatherings. He used to sell a bullseye that said, and underneath it said, "Pagan leader." <laughs> you know, so there's all of that. You know, so um, any other final questions? Yes. Um, uh, and this might kind of take you back on you, and I had this question or question in my mind earlier. But the center of that diagram, I think, at first made me think, oh, well, that must be the ideal is the center. But now I think it's a bit conflicting. So did they ever talk about, for lack of a better term, warm and moist? Like, did they ever talk about that center where? Um, you know, that's a good question. Um, I'm not familiar with it, but I haven't gone into great, tremendous scholarly depth, you know? I'm more finding the interconnections and in some of the pieces there. Um, I know that they had that sense of all of these things being present at the same time mm -hmm. as the ideal. But let me give you another possibility. There's a little story that somebody was once walk, uh, walking behind Jiddu Krishnamurti, you know, the guy who the yeah. theosophist wanted to set up as the next messiah, and he said, up yours. Yeah. Okay, but then he made a living being a non-guru. Uh, non, uh, 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 okay, yeah. 
Well, the person told the story that as Krishnamurti was walking down the street, he met a lot of people, and a lot of people knew him in the village in India or whatever. But he was totally different with the little kid than he was with the shopkeeper, than he was with the holy man, than he was with the businessman, you know, or the follower. There's a certain sense of enlightenment, perhaps, being the full 360 degrees of this. So uh, operating from the center and being able to approach in, in, in flexibility. Yeah. Choices and flexibility, yeah. Something for us all to strive for. If you're going to strive for something, that seems to be a reasonable thing. Did yeah. they have like multiple cells? Or was it like one unified cell with, with different areas? Now we get into a whole other matter. <laughs> um, if you want to talk to me about parts theory, there's a really wonderful new system of working with people in psychotherapy called internal family systems mm -hmm. that works with parts. Mm -hmm. But they also say that there is a self with a capital S that should be in charge of the parts. CEO. Yeah, the CEO. And that knows what the parts need and can help the parts negotiate. But once you're more in touch with that self, then you also have more of a sense of where you need to be in the world and what you really want. Which has been an interesting struggle of mine most recently. My life coach said, okay, you know, you have a part that wants to get a PhD and a part that wants to be, you know, a totally successful therapist and a part that, you know, just wants to run off to an hermit hermitage and, and do the opera melon working for, you know, uh, for two years. And, you know, and it's like, if you're not those parts, what do you want? Mm. Which is a really interesting quest, okay? In a way of looking at it. Um, and there are some interesting books and resources on all of that. If, if you want a good, quick way of making sense of people's behaviors, though, look into internal family systems. It'll give you a really good way of uh, examining and helping people understand. Because people will say naturally, well, one part of me wants this, another part of me wants this, you know. And there's a way you can work with that, um, sort of on the astral, um, to to contact these parts and negotiate with them and, and do that. So, and hold counsel. Hmm? And hold counsel. Yeah, it's, it's like associated personality disorder. <laughs> so I, I, yeah. Like I'm aware of all my personalities, we all work together. Yeah, well I've worked with a few multiples too in my day, that's yeah. been a real trip. Um, so, any other final questions? Okay, <coughs> yeah. Um, there are lots of people who do sidereal astrology, I'm not one of them. Um, part of the reason for that is the tropical zodiac is tied into the ancient principles of the seasons in hot, cold, wet, and dry, and it's an unchanging archetype. Um, now, given that, there are the influences or the correlations with the stars, okay? Um, and those change, you know, the sidereal movement is 72, uh, a degree every 72 years. So there's some shift in that sense. And there's some very interesting things people are doing with the whole sky, like Bernadette Brady. Uh, she's working with, if, if on the day when you, you were born, if one star reaches climax and another one is just rising, there's certain things about that for your whole lifetime, you know, that sort of thing. But no, I don't touch on sidereal. That's a different symbol system in a sense. Uh, the Vedic astrologers use that. And they are very good at prediction, but some of their predictive methods actually are taken from the Greeks. Okay, and we've seen the historical correlations to that. The other thing is, even the sidereal astrologers, there's actually three zodiacs, just to tell you briefly. There's the tropical one, there's the sidereal one, which you're asking about, and then there's the constellational one, which is what all the um, astronomers grops about. The constellational zodiac goes back to the early 20th century when there was a French astronomer who was given $50,000 to draw the boundaries between the constellations. Okay, and that's where you get this 14th sign thing. Okay, uh, but that's not in the archetypal universe, it's in the material universe. Even the sidereal astrologers still divide the signs up into 30 degree pieces. And if you look in the sky, you know, constellations, some of them are huge, like Virgo, and others are really small, like Cancer. 
So they're still being, trying to maintain an archetypal quality, but they're using the precession of the, of the equinoxes uh, to, to cause that continuing changing process. Yeah. But that's a horse of a different color. Okay. Any other final questions? Then the last thing I have to say is, if you're a friend of mine on Facebook, please come up and introduce yourself. <laughs> and if you're not a friend of mine on Facebook, please friend yourself. Tell me, tell me that uh, you met me here. And uh, I'm Alan Salmi there. There is another couple of Alan Salmis. One of them is a guy who shoots moose, but he's down in Florida. Uh, there's an Alan Salmi who's the Persian version of the name. He's an emergency room physician in Milwaukee, and an Alan Salmi in uh, Minnesota, who I friended just to confuse everyone on Facebook. <laughs> but there aren't many of me, and if you type me into Google, I'm the one that comes up, at least on the first page, a lot. Thank you so much, folks, for having me here and for your questions. This isn't exactly a big, you know, scholarly talk, but, you know, hopefully there's some neat information. You can see where you dig around and stuff in history and find patterns. It can be, it can be a lot of fun. So thank you very much. Thank you. I see you're the only in the room. There's another one. Here we go. On behalf of the AJC, before you all walked in the room. Thanks, Alan. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.